to come on up and just show us the plan. Yeah. I have the mile on here. I don't know if you have a paper copy of it, but we do. Do you want a paper copy? That might be better because sometimes it's, sometimes you can look you look right through the mile. Thank you. So the property is at 45 Johnson Street. It's a rather large uh, tract of land. Um, and um, the applicants have purchased the property uh, and are looking to subdivide it um, into three building lots with the remaining land in the back. Uh, so the existing house and structures at 40, known as 45 Johnson uh, would be put on this uh, lot one, which is approximately 3.1 acres. And then we're proposing to create uh, lot two and lot three, lot two being 12 acres and lot three being 13 acres. And then there'll be the remaining parts of the land will be the balance of the property, which is approximately 151 uh, acres. So it's quite a sizable uh, piece of land. So, the three lots in question all have the prerequisite uh, required uh, frontage and area. Um, the only thing that we uh, wanted to point out, we are intending to access lots two and three uh, by way of a shared driveway. We understand that's by special permit. We're working on those plans, so we'll probably be back to see you in the next couple weeks with a, a formal mm -hmm. special permit. Is that the purpose that? of your easement then? That is the purpose of the easement. So um, you, you'll see some you'll see a special permit application for a shared driveway uh, in the coming weeks, but uh, we did memorialize it on the plan since this would have to be recorded anyway. Right. And I think that's all. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? I looked it over for a while. I have a question on the uh, special permit. We have the 5-0 five, five voting power. I don't know if we should vote there. There's no submission from no, the special no permit tonight. Yeah, okay. yeah they haven't applied. It's for the future, right? Okay, all right. Okay. This is just, yeah. just the A and I. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're showing the easement here going through both lots mm -hmm. to eventually right. facilitate Which a common driveway. We'll see more detail on that when we file the special permit for the applicant, yeah. uh, for the, the special permit application. Some the grades there. Yeah. There's some grades. Yeah. Yeah. We have done our initial layout, so we, we know we can make it work, mm -hmm. which is why we Right. Yeah, it makes sense. You're kind of traversing the yep. great height. There's actually an existing an existing road that kind of goes yep. up through there that we're using. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. See any issues with that? Just out of curiosity, any of the rest of the property have to void on the road? Say that again. The rest of the property that's not being developed currently, any of that have frontage on the road? It does not, and it, it is, um, it's, it's DCR has a restriction on that land too so that's yeah, it's just curiosity yeah it's a water it's a watershed preservation area so really just that will remain undeveloped uh in perpetuity as far as we as far as it's it's just delineated on the plate right. too if you see it yeah. watershed yeah everything yeah. everything from here out is oh, watershed okay. preservation yeah. area so gotcha. we're grabbing a little area for this lot but this this portion of this lot will remain in that preservation yeah, area. Remain yeah. basically exactly yeah. 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 Is this 61A? It is, and I think there's an application um, pending with the select board uh, for, for that. You might be able to talk to that. Yeah, that'll be on our next meeting, the planning board recommendation. Yep. But, yeah, that's just for this lot here. These are going to remain 61 for now. No other questions, no other discussion. I'll look at a motion to approve the A&R plan. Motion to approve the A&R JD Realty. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None? Sure. Unanimous? Thank you. Take your plan on sign. We'll take it over to there, okay? Sure. Thank you for taking us out of order. We appreciate it. That's a quick thing. Yeah. Skate park the Proving Dirty? No. <laughs> We're getting lost. 
I meant to call uh, Anthony. Yeah. Just touch base with him. Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. We, we, we have the rudimentary uh, science here. Really? Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. So next up, we have a public meeting for site plan approval. 48 Worcester Road, uh, Dragonfly applicant. So I'll just read the legal notice. Pursuant to Section 301 6.4 Site Plan Review, the Town of Sterling Protective Bylaws. Notice is hereby giving that the Planning Board will hold a public meeting on Thursday, August 22nd, 2024, at 6 30 p.m. in room 205, Butterick Municipal Building, 1 Park Street, to review site plan for the expansion of a contractor's yard at 48 Worcester Road, tax map 146, lot 3. The applicant is Dragonfly, designed and built. So with that being said, who do we have here representing Dragonfly? I'm Tim Norton, follower of Dragonfly, designed and built. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Val and I did a site visit. Dave was it um, last week. I've also visited the site. Okay, so Mike's visited the site. Uh, Val and I took a trip out there and we visited the site. We actually met with Tim. I'm familiar with the site. Okay, the site. Okay, so we actually met with Tim. Had some discussion with Tim, and um, there was a couple of things that that um, we talked about. So. I'll, I'll start by one thing. There was, um, there's been some talk about on the right side of the building, um, some stored, some palletized storage. Um, I, I think there may have been a misunderstanding on that. That it was the storing of empty pallets. It really is not empty pallets being stored that has any kind of fire hazard. It's pallets with material on it: pavers, stone, blue stone. Mr. Chairman, that was a comment from the fire department in the review process. Right. Um, he would like to see the building setbacks put on the plan. I believe you, you've instructed your surveyor to do that. Mm -hmm. I'd also suggest that you invite Lieutenant Tom out for a site walk and show him the area in question and okay. get yeah. that sorted out with him. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I, I didn't see anything with that, so you want to take take it up with him. Sure. Yeah. I just wanted to put that out there first because it seemed to be some discussion on that, and I think from what I saw and what I read, I think that that was a something was confused with that. Okay. It's yeah. not actually storing pallets; it's pallets with material, pallets, yeah, exactly. stone, and everything else. Material that's on pallets. Right. Yeah. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. right. So we drove down. We drove down the back side of the property. We drove all around. We drove down the back side of the property. And um, it's a fine operation going there. Um, when you're heading down Bootel Road, when you first come to the property line, there's a wooden stockade fence um, that's blocking the side of the business from uh, the house that's next door. Could probably use a little repair, but it's certainly, certainly doing the job. Uh, as you as you come down Bootel Road, heading back towards Route 12, uh, there's a pretty there's a pretty good buffer of trees uh, and, and vegetation uh, up until you get to the end of that back uh, steel building. From that point down to the property line is fairly open, and um, thinking of future storage in that area, if you like the future store, we talked about it. We felt as though uh, an, a fence would be appropriate from that point down to the to the corner of the lot to block any storage of materials or anything of that nature that are going to eventually make their way um, to that spot. So the first half of it uh, is, is, a, is a pretty good buffer. You might see through a little bit uh, when the leaves come off the trees, but it's, it's, a, it's a good buffer. It's from the edge of the building down. At that point, you could store stuff in there and you wouldn't have to worry about, you know, uh, People complaining, looking at the stuff you're storing, it would be concealed with a fence. That would be that would be consistent 
with what we've done with the other two yards in the same area, with, okay. the, with, the, same, with, the, same, with the same issue, you know, looking at stored materials and whatnot, shielding that with a fence. That's what we kind of get out of it. Is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, you want to add to that? No, I, uh, I definitely agree. Uh, like I said, from about the corner of the building over, um, it's pretty open, and during the winter time, you know, it'll be, uh, um, there won't be a barrier, so uh, I can see some type of structure. Yeah. So, if I may. Yep. Um, a couple of things I do agree, but the only thing that I'd suggest is that the, because we've seen this in the past, that if a fence is going to be put in, it does not cut through that wooded area because they're going to have to remove some large gauge yeah. trees, which we don't want to see. No, we My understanding is you want it at the edge of this wooded area as shown on the plan. On the right side. Yeah. Okay. The other part of that is there's currently material around that same corner that either hits the property line or is within about eight feet of the roadway. All of that needs to be cleared up and put okay. behind the fence. Uh, okay. And I do agree that the fence, especially when this uh, pallet and stone storage area is in use, that would block it from the neighborhood and from the road. Completely agree with it. So Mr. Chairman, if you could mark on, the, on one of those paper site plans the extent of where you want the fence, and they maybe specify for the applicant what kind of fence you're looking for. Okay. okay. Um, so, Val had brought something up with the area from the from the fence. Um, I'm sorry, from the corner of the building up to the stockade fence. Um, so I guess it's kind of a hit or miss. Talking directly behind the building. Right here. No. Yep. Behind the building is, yes. is is fine, but this area right here where where you could actually. Understood. See yep. a little bit into right here. It's a it's a nice buffer. It's got trees. It's got stuff in the winter time when the leaves come off. It'll be it'll be pretty visible. So it'll be exposed more. We right. talked about maybe just um, Tim doing some plantings of arborvitaes or some type of shrubbery. some type of uh, some type of shrubbery that's low lying. You know, like six feet. And then when the leaves come off the trees, that will be completely. That will be and that would be more closer to the road. I'm hoping to. Uh, it would probably, be, uh, Tim. I think you would have to put it on the inside. Uh, you wouldn't uh, lose any parking area because you you put it right at the edge of your tree line. Yeah. So you, you would put them there. So now when that low line stuff is gone, that would be your that would be your uh, your wooded screening. Would it help if you wanted to approach and we can kind of if I could, yeah. try uh, to at least get some? So I guess yeah. from my perspective, I would if it's an option. I would prefer to heavily plant the property line um, and not put any, I don't know if it's an either or or anything, but. I, I think part of the difficulty of planting that is you have some very large trees. Sure, yeah. And to get plantings in there, you're probably gonna have to damage the root systems on a ton of large trees. And there is, you have a significant setback where that wooded area is more in keeping with the neighborhood. I think that's the way we're looking at it. And I think the idea here, if I understand it correctly, is you want plantings here, right, right. not intruding upon the area you want, but just simply during the winter because this area has the least amount of uh, of um, conifers, of evergreen trees, that if something was there, it would block this more. Uh -huh. And yeah. then, again, the fence is at that tree line, and the fence is at that tree line. Okay. Does that make yeah. sense to you? So you're not losing, we're not trying to take away anything that you're trying to use. Sure, yeah. But what yeah. we're trying to do is create a secondary visual barrier, especially during the winter. Yeah. Uh -huh. When, because most of the large trees are deciduous there. That way there would be, even your trucks moving around wouldn't be we seen. Yeah, it might be, if it was on the outside near the road, the road solved me, plowing's going to get And I also out. believe if you put a, if you put a fence right on the roadway, it would actually be much more visually unattractive as compared to the woods and then the fence where that wood line ends. It would, it would be tough to get it there and it would take a beating from the snow plows. Oh, I think uh, we've seen it in West Boylston where the snow plows come through and, and they just blow a fence right away if we have a good storm. Totally agree. Uh, uh, just a question, in that wooded area right now, yep. there are some like really big white pines and yep. some of those are have branches hanging over this building. Do I have restrictions on whether I'm allowed to 
take those you, out later on if I need to. If you have the whole tree out? Taking the yeah. tree or the limbs? The tr Some of them, the tree, just in the future if I ever want to do My whole thing is you actually have a, I believe the comments from the ZBA were that you were to maintain that wooded barrier. Uh -huh, yeah. Which means you can't go in and cut trees down from that unless, in my opinion, and you may have to clarify it, unless you're replacing like with like and there's no way you can afford to put a you know, yeah, a 16 inch yeah. caliper tree on that property. Uh -huh, yeah. And the biggest thing is, the large trees do shade, uh, block the view of, of that large building you have in the back which very I like well. That. Yeah, I like all that. It's just some of them are white pines, which just drop yeah, sap. Mike, I'll, I'll read the uh, condition from there. I thought they either comment. during the commentary or during the decision they had mentioned about it's maintaining that so barrier. This is what they put in writing. This is buffer will be maintained. The wooded buffer along Hotel Road as contained in the plans will be maintained. That's it. So, so you'd, ma you'd maintain it. If you wanted to take the tree out totally, I think you would go back to the ZBA oh, okay. and tell them what you oh, want yeah, to do. I was just curious what the process what, is. What you want to do, and, uh, and if they're overhanging your building, you want to cut the branches off. Maybe significantly I don't think you better have. off, depending of removing some limbs. Uh -huh. Okay. Some Sorry, yeah, and an arborist come yeah. in, take a look, and tell you what you could do so that you're not having the sap drop on your sure, nice buffer uh, shop. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the uh, what what you would like it to see as a correct fence from okay yeah, yeah on the ins on the inside same yeah. with these here these would be you know obviously doing what you do would be a lot easier to accomplish here for you yeah uh -huh. and then and then the fence so we would be we would be looking for a white stockade fence similar to vinyl okay. yep can, can we add i know it's probably not because the way it economically makes the most sense but i also have no objection i don't think the board would if it's a non-intrusive earth tone if it's a brown or a green or whatever it happens to be, because it does tend to blend in on a residential street. Yeah, you tend to, the, the colors tend to be a lot more expensive than white. Agreed. That's why, that's why I, white's I, want, I don't want to put someone into the fact that they have to get white, is, at least if they have some options. Is wood, you know, wood? Wood we found has not been maintained. Um, the posts rot, the fences fall, oh, they become very unattractive very quickly, especially when you have other material oh, okay. against yeah. them. That's been our biggest problem with fences in town is that, you know, they, they rot, they turn black. Oh, I see. They yeah. don't do well. And um, if you've noticed, we have several places on Route 12 now with the same style of uh, fence. That's yeah. what we're trying to do is have a yeah. cohesive vision. For I see. The, okay. one that's, the one that's between you and your neighbor there to your, to your rights, probably a classic example. Okay. You yeah. Know, yeah. Same, actually, down, same down the street, they actually re repaired that one and put that one back together because it was falling apart. Uh, yeah. yeah. The, the fence here, I believe you have one or two panels that need to be repaired. You'd be doing yeah, that as part of the work. Repairs. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah I, I just, I know it was even mentioned during the ZBA, the gentleman that's next door to you has no objections to anything, but he had mentioned in passing that he would appreciate if the fence get repaired, gets sure, repaired. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you have a very clean property. You have a very well-worked-out property. And to me, at least, when I drive down that way, that's like the one thing that stands out is that one piece of tilted fence. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So. Okay. Okay, so I'm hearing three plan amendments, add the building setbacks, add the fence location. Building setbacks are on there, I think, already. Aren't they? Building setbacks? Yeah, they've, they've been put on. They're all here. It's no, no, that no. It's no, showing the dimension. We're looking for the requirement. 20 feet. Oh, okay. We're looking for the requirement, not the dimension. So add the building setbacks per zoning. Okay. Yeah. Add the fence location, and add um, whatever landscaping you'll be adding. Okay. So if your surveyor could turn that around and get it back to us by September twelfth, great spot yeah. for it. That's when the board can take this up again. Board. All right. What's Dave? Go ahead. Um, if he makes those plan amendments in time for our September 12th meeting, yeah, we, we can take him then. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the only other thing I'd mention is that back access. I know you don't use it. I know that's part of the whole plan, but it should be kept clear for the use of emergency vehicles or whatever oh, may okay. happen there. That would be just one other thing that we'd want to see. Yeah. To make sure that that doesn't end up. Not that you would, but. At least it's in writing to leave that clear, and that's for emergency vehicle access only. We already yeah. know that. You've explained uh, that prior. He, he's going to invite uh, Captain Tom from the fire department out there for uh, a walkthrough to address his comments. So, 
And so, then you had mentioned that I needed to put a, a parking schedule or parking details at parking table. Table. Yeah. So it, it'll tell you the parking table is in the zoning bylaws. It'll explain how many parking spaces you actually need. The uh, site plan I sent you as an plan. example has such a parking table. Yeah. Okay. Go by yeah. that. Yeah, and okay. you have a ton of parking. You're, you're well going to meet it with these. Sure, yeah. It's just a matter of it being ADA laid out. Yeah, it appears you have an ADA spot in the front that's yeah. currently yeah. compliant. Yeah, I don't see that works. So it's basically to, it's just it's just a block yeah, that shows the what the requirements of parking are for okay, the yeah. particular application. And then on the next site plan, I have to show the fence location and the landscaping. Do I need to show like exactly what plant is going to be put where? And yeah, okay, you have yeah. to tell us what kind of plant it is, absolutely. Okay. I'm getting all and you, and you, I think you mentioned that you like to see six foot on center as a... At the most, dish. yeah. Okay. If, if you would go four, that would be good, but six okay. feet, six feet, uh, yeah. we've done in the past, but four would be, would be better, depending on what you're planting. Yeah, okay, yeah. All right, so those are our comments. Do we have any comments from the public? Any of buddies here that have anything to say? No. Okay. Well, that being said, then uh, I guess Mike, Mike, the debris that's in that corner. Yeah, debris will yep. have to be moved. So actually, I have a question um, on, on uh, Tim's behalf. Um, you mentioned something about, it gets kind of dangerous, you mentioned something about leaving the back entrance open. I noticed over the years... Um, I didn't say that a chain couldn't be there. What I mean okay. is material to okay. drop there. Okay. The example would be if he has heavy equipment and he parked a piece oh, of machinery weird. there overnight and there's a fire and they have, yeah. for some reason Route 12 is blocked, we want a secondary. I understand. Yeah. I just wanted to make that. It's definitely not... Because he has a... No, I would Over not want the years, that. people cut through there and they speed through there. Agreed. I would not want to see that being used by anybody else okay. besides yeah. besides Dragonfly. And, and they also don't use that because of, I believe, a prior permit. There was no, I just, we just tried to not okay. Yeah, like I said, I, I know that chain's been there a long time. It's been there for several years. Yeah. The ADA thing says they can only use it for emergency access. Okay, there we go. Uh, no restriction. Yeah. yeah, so either way. Or it should be used for that. Yeah, when we bought the building, it was open and... Like Fran was saying, there's oh yeah, everybody used there's a cutoff. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, save himself six seconds. Yeah, Fran. All right, so I guess I'll take a motion that we continue this to our September 12th meeting. If you think you'll be ready, you think you can be ready by September 12th? Yeah, I'd like to. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. We can go, let's say 6:45. That'll give us 45 minutes with our site plan consultant. Yep. Tim, do you want this one that I marked up? Sure. Yep. Yeah. Touch that. Get six, correct? Yep. Yeah. So we need to vote on that. Yep. So to continue, take a motion that we continue it to the September 12th meeting, 6:45. So. so. <laughs> Any further discussion? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Unanimous. So we'll see you on the 12th. Okay. Right. Oh, actually, sorry, one question. Yep. Um, so if, if at the next meeting everything's in line and it's up for approval, yep. do, do you then give a timeline for the fence to go in, or how does that work as far as, like, the any, like, getting these things done? The uh, well, I can, I can tell you in fairness and consistency, uh, we gave uh, another applicant on the same road um, three months, 90 days, within 90 okay. days. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we would extend the same thing to you within 90 days. Oh, yeah. They okay. can do it next week or within that time frame. Sure. Okay, thanks. Okay. So you're all set. Okay. We'll see you on the 12th. Okay, all right, thank you. All right. Um, So the next thing we got is uh, review new zoning proposals from the uh, building department, definitions, accessory uses, structures. So board members, in our three-year odyssey to update zoning, uh, the building department would like to add some new definitions 
and re revise some of our existing definitions that are found in the zoning bylaw. You've got a copy of them as part of your package with the deleted text in strike through and the new text in red. Um, we use the American Planning Association big book of definitions to find language that um, the department thought would be suitable. Um, any questions on any of that? Questions on any of the changes, Steve? Yes. Yeah, yes. I do have, I do have a couple. Okay. So one of them was, let me get to it. Building height. So the definition for building height uh, is new. It says the vertical distance from uh, grade plane to the average height of the house. No, that, that's an existing definition. It's in red. Okay. No, there. So there's a, there's a definition off. for building height and then a definition for height, comma, building. Oh, okay. All right. We have two that conflict. Yeah, we should probably not do that. Oh, okay. All right. I'm, I'm with you. So. Which page is it? It's on. One, double sided one. So two. we've got a definition for building height and we've got a definition height building. Right. Yeah. They should be the same. Yes. Yep. Do you like one better than the other? Page is the other one on now. Average height at the highest roof surface. That's the first one. That's really nice. Okay. So the building height should be the one. Because the building height is basically telling you that your height limitation is going to be based on from the from the ground to the highest point of your roof, and that's the way it should be. Then we have height building that takes that says that you take an average of of height to the highest roof surface. So that might be something pretty difficult to obtain an average well, height. Well, let's let's strike height come up building and go with in the, its entirety. Yeah. I, I don't understand it. I don't. Yeah, and, and also we, we're using an existing definition that we haven't had a point of pain on yet, so. Yeah. And I then, I didn't understand the difference between business offices and business services. It's like almost identical wording. Yeah. I think they are identical. They are identical. I think they are identical. Yeah. Not quite, almost. One says in the rendering of services to other businesses, and one says in rendering services to other businesses. How about we just say business offices slash services? Right. All right. I can just email you, like, there's a couple of typos. Yeah. The only other one I had, I guess I'd have to read it again, structure. A combination of materials assembled at a fixed location to give support or shelter, such as a building retaining wall which retains four or more feet of unbalanced fill, fences over seven feet high, swimming pools that contain water over 20 <coughs> inches in depth, and 250 square feet of surface area or the like. The, the word structure shall be construed where the context requires, as though followed by the words, parts thereof. Does that make sense? Then? Okay, if you've got a question on that, I would get with Tony, our building commissioner. Yeah, he's, I just... He's pulling it from that book, correct? Are you saying that's where that came from? It either came from the book or it came from Tony. So maybe just some clarification on that because I'm, I'm not quite... If it's a standard definition contained within that book, I have zero issue with it just because we know it's been tested and tried by hundreds, if not well, thousands, thousands of agencies. Signed out. But let's I feel confirm like it's that. Missing or or parts thereof. Like the crossed yeah. out one says or portions thereof. Like there's a very yeah. similar passage that was crossed out. Right. We've seen it gone to parts. So. Yeah, but it seems like they lost the or. Structure or yeah. parts thereof, not structure parts thereof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, but 
So we should ask. In your next stop at town hall, we'll try to grab it. So we can grab that what it is intending there. And then I would probably talk to him on this one too. There shall be no more than two accessory building structures on the same lot. I'm on accessory buildings and uses. There shall be no, no more than two accessory building structures on the same lot. Garages containing three or more bays shall be considered commercial use and shall require a special permit and site plan review from the planning board. Are we talking residential? Yeah, that's because three garages is that's standard. Very typical now. It's very standard in a in a in a residential home, three three garages. So if anything I would say in, in excess of three, more than three, but three is pretty common. So I'd also especially with the larger houses, I, I know in other towns you have people with a triple and then another double. Right. That's I mean, when you're talking very expensive houses, that does not surprise me at all. Three plus garages. So I think I would just talk to you about that, and uh, to me, uh, more than three um, would be appropriate. I think three, we'd have an awful lot of people coming in for site plan because there's an awful lot of three car garages. It's almost it's standard in your bigger houses, three car garage. All right. Well, that was uh, from this was from Tony, so. Right. Um, I'll, I'll get with them and ask. Um, that was it for me. He had an issue with moving it to more than three. Right. I would say more than three would be would be more appropriate than I than three. Sorry, because I, I think we're getting larger scale single family homes in this town that are, are, the, are the norm to have right. three. At least a double and a single you see in many places. Mm -hmm. I think four would be more unusual. Can come before. The only one I had a question on was a wholesale warehouse or distribution facility, only because we've seen in the past, not necessarily this board, some discussion every time we talk about a warehouse. Um, it, it, matter of fact, I believe it came up with Dragonfly, which to me, they were not having a warehouse, they have storage for their own material. To me, there's a significant difference between a business having an area where they store their own material for use they're not retail, they're having material that they are having on site, excuse me, and then bring off site for whatever use that they use it for, as compared to a warehouse, which to me is primarily for distribution. You're not distributing things if it's your own material. I mean, there's separate things for contractor's yard and warehouse. Yeah, well, contractor's yard seems to be outside, but the warehouse thing, like for internal storage, to me, if, if uh, you have a company like let's use Dragonfly, and they put a bunch of pallets inside because it's fragile material. Mm -hmm. That's internal storage, it's not a warehouse. And I just wanna make sure that we can at some point clarify that, because I know part of the bylaws we even discussed where they said we don't, we did not intend warehouses to mean smaller establishments. We meant it for larger warehouses such as, in matter of fact, everybody brings up Amazon as the example of a warehouse. And, and I just, I think we need to kind of maybe go over that and talk to ZBA just to make sure that we're not in conflict with this idea of turning everything that everybody has a warehouse and then it requires special permits when it may be just simply they're storing material on site for their own use, which to me is not a warehouse. How do you feel about what's in red here on wholesale warehouse and distribution facility? We'll see it's use but not for sale on the premises without exit. Like my thing, what does later distribution mean? Because the way I could read that is Anybody who stores any of their own material under a roof has a warehouse. And to me, if it's for your own use, that's not a warehouse. I just want to clarify that we're distribution. Or at least clarify the fact that we do not have a warehouse when you're talking about someone having internal storage for their own use. That's not a warehouse. And no, this is, this is storing stuff to sell elsewhere. Have it shipped elsewhere to yeah, stores. Agreed. I just want to make sure that that's clear. I, I don't, I just, I've seen this, we've tripped over the word warehouse, at least at the CBA, two or three times. I know it was even mentioned during Dragonfly, during their discussion, as to what qualifies as a warehouse, because he now has internal storage. That's not a warehouse to me, and I want to make sure we don't trip over that for the next 10, 15 years. So you want, you don't want this read as um, storing your own stuff? Yeah, it, it's, this is for distribution to other entities, Right, is a warehouse. Or if you were dis distributing it to direct consumers, I, I think such I, as Amazon, I believe that's what they intend. But I just like to make sure that that's perfectly clear, so that someone doesn't come in 
and say, hey, I, I, I can come up with something towards the end. Yeah, I, I just don't want to see someone come in and be punished because they're trying to store whatever they use for their own materials under a roof. Got it. Scott? I question though. So if you're storing stuff and manufacturing something, then for the express use in the future, right? So you're bringing in storing stuff for manufacture. Yep. You're manufacturing something else and distributing that. Is that a warehouse? Are you storing the things that you're distributing there? Well, I'm asking like yes. SMC. My SMC would be a good example. They bring in stuff, they store stuff, they manufacture other components that are then distributed from the stuff that they're storing. So th my whole thing would be if you had a manufacturing plant that has no storage of the materials you're going to distribute? Yeah. Well, that would just manufacturing something that's going to subsequently get distributed. Then it's a warehouse because yeah, okay. they're taking, just, they're yeah. taking the material. Right. For LKQ no. would be another problem. Right. My example yeah. is um, any business here, LKQ is definitely a warehouse. It's yeah, being distributed no, everywhere. That's, that's, that's different to me than someone having a business and saying, hey, I need 5,000 square feet of space because I, I put in all my poles in a building that I then use for fencing or I do it or dragonfly. Dragonfly is a good example because right. they're using it for their own, their own stuff. stuff right. to, to and I, uh, and my thing is I don't want to see someone have to go through that special That's permit again. That's all. We'll put a dragonfly called a laydown area or in a contractor staging yard. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure we're, we're allowed indoor storage for yeah. a commercial no. use. Yeah. All right. Let alone there's aquifer protection and wetland issues associated with stormwater and stuff too on industrial. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all that being said, um, Steve, you'll you'll take that up with. Uh, I'll, I'll make the uh, appropriate oh, revisions. I'll talk with the building department. Okay. Other than that, I think it looks great. Yeah. Um. So all the other zoning amendments are up on the planning board web page. There's a link to them from the front page of the town's website. And I have started making appointments to uh, make my tour of the other boards, commissions, and committees to explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. If any of you would like to join me for these meetings, that would be great. Uh, Tuesday, September 10th at 7 p.m., I'll be briefing the DPW commissioners. On Wednesday, September 25th at 7 p.m., I'll be briefing the Open Space Committee. On Tuesday, October 8th, I'll be briefing the Zoning Board at 6.30. And on Thursday, October 17th at 6.30, I'll be briefing the Finance Committee. I've yet to hear back from the Agricultural Committee or the Board of Health or Conservation. Um, I imagine I'll hear from either Matt or your chair at some yeah, point. Yeah, it would probably be Matt. He's acting as the agent. Just to clarify from my own, um, 6 p.m. on September 10th? Was that the proper time? September 10th? Yeah, um, no, DPW. that's 7 p.m. 7 p.m., thank you. That's the DPW? Yeah. Yes. I'll try and make as many of those as I can. Yeah. And that's that on the zoning amendments. Well, the zoning amendments, that's not going to be until, if May. they're approved, next town meeting, not this coming meeting, the following May. year. Right. May 2025. Yeah. Yeah. The whole point of touring these zoning amendments right now is to get everyone's feedback if we need to make any necessary revisions. It's better to explain to these folks what we're doing and why we're doing it now uh, so that they're comfortable with it when it shows up at town meeting. It, it gives um, people time to think of questions, get those answered before town meeting that turns into a 12-hour town meeting for answers that have already been That's given. what it's all about. Totally agree. All right. Okay. Next, we have deed brief from all boards meeting with town council. So that was our joint meeting with the zoning board, town council, and the select board. Um, I thought that went very well. I think we got a lot of useful information out of it. Wanted to hear what you folks had to say about it. Thought she did a spectacular job explaining that in layman's language. 
Yeah, it's it was a lot. A lot got covered during that. And I think the vast majority of it was pretty readily understood, and it did bring up significant questions about you know the number of votes that we need, the number of votes the ZBA needs, et cetera, et cetera. Speaking of which. I'm sure as she was giving that presentation and explaining the voting requirements for a special permit, some of you remembered the special permit that we issued recently for the shared driveway on James Patton Drive. Yep. Um, so a super majority for the planning board is four out of five members, the, the entire board. It's not a super majority of the members in attendance. Um, I thought it was, and at that meeting when we had four members, I thought three votes was sufficient. That's my error. I will own it. I think um, all of us thought the same thing. But we, we do need to correct that. We You're mistaken. We will. Yeah. We've, we've notified the applicant, and he's going to submit. Resubmit, refile. On the advice of town council, um, she advised that we have him resubmit. We re-advertise it as a public hearing. We re-notify abutters. So it's a complete do-over. Get it right this time. Yeah. Start from the Same beginning. plan. Um, yep. Just the whole the whole process has right, to be repeated. Right. Yep. So um, in talking with the applicant, I can bring him back here on our meeting on September 26. I need all five of you here for that meeting. Yeah, so be if some of you can't be here, I gotta know. I can't. You can't. I'll be in a canoe in Minnesota. <laughs> a canoe in Minnesota? Yeah, that's very specific. There's no internet there? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I guarantee you there's probably no internet. Can't, you can't get on Zoom in that canoe? This is a true vacation. The week before? The week before. I'm good. That would be... Okay, give me a minute here to do some counting. I mean, we only need four of us that are going to vote yes, right? We yeah, do, well, but last time... Can I have that report? <laughs> <laughs> That's assuming everyone's votes, yeah. If I advertise it tomorrow, we can bring him in on the 12th. Perfect. What's our agenda look like for the 12th so far? Well, we're going to be meeting with our site plan consultant until 6.45. Yeah, we have the continuation of the site plan now. And then this. Okay. Firefly and that, that's not bad. Well, if you, have, if you advertise it tomorrow and those dates work, then I don't see why we shouldn't do yeah, that. We should. Especially if it's our mistake, the quicker we do it and resolve the issue, the better off. Okay, so I'll get that in the paper tomorrow. Uh, probably pr be printed the last week in August and the first week in September. Um, that's plenty in plenty of time before the 12th. No, uh, I will advertise it for 7 o'clock on the 12th. Somebody needs to let the applicant know that we're going to do it. I thought they saw the applicant here today. Yeah, yeah, so, somebody, needs, sure. somebody needs to let Jim know yeah, I will it's going to be in the time. Letters go out, sorry. Will letters go out to the abutters again? Yes. Yeah. The yes. whole process has to be repeated. Will he rescind his... No, town council says there's no need to rescind. Until the vote's taken. Right. right. If the, if the no, vote there's no a, need to rescind if, at all. Right. Because if the vote is... The building commissioner than, couldn't uh, grant him building permits right. based on uh, a short vote. Okay, so, okay, so that's one for Quick question. I <coughs> I read <coughs> email um, that he's already went to the. Um, yes, he already court. recorded the decision. He did. We'll have to re-record it. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's my question. Yeah. The decision is an error. It's going to have to be removed. The second, the second one will have a notation that it supersedes the first one. Obligated to hold a public hearing on the zoning amendments proposed by ZBA. Um, we are, uh, but that's 
they haven't, there's nothing before us right now. Uh oh, I mean, okay. uh, on her, when she was talking, she said super majority, I use shared driveway for example, is five to four out of five. Out of five, is five, super five and she also four suggested five. that if I we thought have you said five. Five. No, no, four, four out of five. five. Super. Four out of five, and it can't be three out of four as a super yeah. majority. And then the other suggestion I wasn't was here, so yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I was here for her meeting. If there's only four members, to me, the important part is, if there's only four members present, we can advise the applicant that they need all four yes votes. At which point they could then withdraw it to submit it again when there are five members here. Or as for no, continue. Yeah, sorry, continuance, not withdraw. Continuance. continuance. To five person board. But that we should be doing that so that it's fully understood. Votes. It was three to one. Correct. Yeah, it didn't pass. Huh? Which it didn't pass, which we are unaware of at the time. We thought we needed a simple majority. Okay. Or at least I did. I thought three out of four so was a super majority. Three out of four of it. Seventy-five percent. So that's that's my error. Well, we're going to fix it. So I did also ask about recusals. If that affects the super majority, and she did say yes. So if we ever do have something that comes forward and one person has to recuse themselves, it's still four. If two people recuse themselves, you can't act on it. And there is a process where the people can then review their the reason for recusal and decide if they can be um, impartial. And then unrecused the themselves. The rule of necessity would kick in. Right. Yeah. That was to me was important. Not that necessarily we get a recusal, but if we have an absence and a recu and someone recuses themselves, we wouldn't be able to take any action whatsoever. All right. Anybody got anything else on that? No. Okay. So if we move past that. We know our next uh, September date is the 12th. We're not going to have one, another one in September, so that will be our only meeting on the 12th of September. So on September 12th, we're meeting at 6 o'clock to accommodate our site plan consultant. Yep. And the meeting on the 26th would be our regular meeting. That'll be at 6.30. You still want to do the 26th? You said two, two in no. September. If there's, if there's business before us. Okay. I just assumed we would take care of it. And on the 12th. Uh, if something else comes in, we can. I have a problem with that. So is he going to get us a draft, like, well in advance of that? Can what? Is he, he going to get us a draft of the site plan regulations before the 12th? the 12th? Yes, you'll have something to look at in advance of the meeting. Um, I did want to bring up October. Our normal meeting date would be Thursday night, October 24th, but I have a personal conflict that night and I wanted to see how many board members could make Thursday night, October 17th. Honestly, I don't know. I'm, I'm supposed to go away, and I don't know exactly what day it is. Honestly. It's okay. It's a little far in advance, though. Yes, it's the case. I, I think I'm available, but it's so far in advance. I should be available. Just wanted to make sure I should be. Was a definite no. I know I'm going away at the end of the month. What's out? We do have some idea on the 12th. Yeah. Yeah. But if you if you're out the other days, then we talk about it on the 12th. Hopefully, we'll have a better idea of schedules. Okay. All right. We'll talk about it then. All right. So that brings us to. Number six, reorganization of the planning board offices and committee appointments. We've been trying to do that for a while. We've got a full board, so tonight's the night to do it. So I would probably start that as um, we have an open spot on the vice chair position. So I would nominate Val um, to be vice chair. I don't know how the board feels about that. Val, Val, do you want to do it? Yeah, that's no problem. Anybody else had an interest? I asked him, I wouldn't have. Yeah, I just thought. Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd like him to say I had to ask him first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's all. John, you can do that. Well, then take a motion that we not, did we uh, point Val vice chair? So moved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 So, Carl, you want to stick with the chairmanship? I will if the board wants me to. Make a motion that uh, Carl is willing to take the chairman for another year. Couple warm bodies for the uh, regional planning commission appointments. Uh, the planning board gets a delegate to uh, the regional planning commission. They meet uh, every Thursday, the first Thursday of every month. Which one of you is the uh, person? I think that was Patty. Patty was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm. Uh, um, those meetings, I keep an eye on them, and if there's something there that I think Sterling needs to sit in on, I attend on Sterling's behalf, but I can't vote. Um, so you'll get the uh, meeting agendas and the meeting materials, and you can decide if you think it's worth attending or not, but I do need someone for that position. I'll do it. Who wants to do that? Eric. 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 Okay, now the Joint Transportation Committee, also with the Planning Commission. Carl, and, Carl isn't that you? Well, is that an MRPC as well? Still want to do it? Yeah. I don't see anybody like tackling me to get the jobs. <laughs> Jump on <laughs> <up>. <laughs> that concludes that matter. Thank you, everyone. All right. Um, minutes. 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 Stood up. Okay. Pretty good, rather lengthy. See, yeah. Rather lengthy ones. The only thing on my name is not a big deal. J O H N, not John. J O N. Ah, so I've right. been making that mistake right along. So <laughs> we'll, we'll fix it. Anything else? I'm all set. Is there anything else? Anything out there? Anybody else got anything? Okay. Make a motion to accept July 18th uh, minutes with the correction of John's name. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That all being said, yeah. nobody's got anything else. Like uh, a <laughs> Take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye.